Hey guys, it's Gameface here and welcome back to episode 5 of my England career mode, otherwise known as Roy's Replacement. In today's episode we are going to be playing the game against Russia to hopefully try and extend our lead in front of Slovenia and also Turkey as well hopefully. And we will be playing that game and trying to, uh, like I say, progress um, up the league table by getting more points. We are currently obviously top at the moment so we can't go any higher uh, to try and maintain first place. And then we'll move on to some other international games, but we will have the summer transfer window before those appear. I think the next ones after this is in September. So we've got a little bit of a jump um, after this game against Russia. But before we get into the game, if we could go hit 20 likes on this video, that would be really appreciated. Also, if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. That will be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so you can stay up to date and everything like that. Also go follow me on Twitter as well, at GameFaceHD, um, where I keep you up to date all the time with what's happening in videos and that sort of thing. This is the team that's going to be playing um, for the game against Russia. Gone with a, a slightly interesting formation here. Sterling playing a little bit further out on the left rather than as a midfielder, um, just so we've got some sort of width. Harry Kane starts, as you can see, uh, along with kind of the usual sort of players you'd expect. Let's go with this game against Russia, hopefully get ourselves three points. We need three points, obviously. Uh, I think last time we played against them, it was a draw, if I'm right. It was one of the first games, I think, one of the first internationals that we played uh, during these qualifiers. And I'm pretty sure it was a draw, but I could be wrong. Uh, we might have even lost to them, uh, if my memory serves me correct. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can win against them this time, uh, because we desperately need to. And really, it's a winnable game with the sort of side that we've got. Uh, and we've definitely improved a lot since I joined, so uh, hopefully we can continue that. Harry Kane through to Barkley, can we have a shot here with Barkley? Straight to the keeper, Kane picks it back up and it's a poor first touch in the end, I was trying to cut it back but uh, it just didn't really let me. Harry Kane starting for the first time I think for me here, gonna try and put a cross in for Danny Welbeck, must be a corner that one, good header over the bar in the end by the defender, let's try and get it in here with Jordan Henderson not a bad ball in, just can't quite pick anybody out. And that is it for the first half still, drawing the game nil-nil. We need to make some changes, not the most eventful first half really. Um, let's make a couple of changes, Harry Kane is going to come off I think, uh, but I'll make the changes first before I show you them. Okay, all three changes have been made already. Delft's going to come on and Vardy and Walker will also make an appearance. That means Sterling, Barkley and um, we've also got Harry Kane there coming off as well. So yeah, those three changes have been made. Delph will now just come into it more of a midfield uh, position. Harry Kane, he's come off because I'm going to start using Mov as a uh, player to come off the bench. He just doesn't have the legs to start a game. It's so frustrating because I, I, I keep on saying I want to play him uh, because he obviously starts most of the time for England. Um, but he just doesn't really have the legs to even beat the Russian uh, centre-back. So that tells you something. And uh, yeah, we are going to take him off and, and try and go with a bit more pace up, for, up front. Walcott finds Vardy, doesn't have much support in the middle though, still going Jamie Vardy, cuts back inside and it's a good save from Akinfeev in the end, and I'll just clear that one quite comfortably. That's it, drawing the game nil nil. It was always a case of Russia played that badly that it made us also play badly as well. Really don't know how we've lost that game, although saying that we didn't create that many chances at all, it's just a poor game of football, it really was. One of the worst performances uh, that we've had in a long time for us. So really disappointing, we've dropped two points there as far as I'm concerned, hopefully, um, hopefully I think it's Turkey that's beneath us, hopefully they've done just as bad. I mean it says we've had two shots and one on target and it looks like Russia have dominated us from those stats, it really isn't the case, that doesn't take into account possession in their half and that sort of thing. Turkey also drew which is good, because um, they have dropped two points, so we do remain top of our group for now. Uh, which is good news because now we're going into um, the end of the season and the summer transfer window. So we've got some more player development to do. This will be with our youth academy players though. Um, because I'm keen to try and get them up as much as possible. Um, so we can start to introduce some at some stage obviously. Um, the England setup and that sort of thing. We've got a few there going up in overall which is great news for us. Um, whether they will go up enough to uh, challenge for the uh, England team, obviously not the World Cup team I would imagine, uh, but some of the friendlies, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see when we get to that sort of point. I'll basically just uh, sim up to the qualifiers I'd imagine and uh, then we can select our team. Actually what I forgot to mention was that we can now promote some more youth players um, into our first team if we would like to obviously, uh, depending on how good they actually are. So we've got a couple of decent players here, we'll quickly just scan through them, see if there's any standout players. Uh, there will obviously be a lot of players that we can get rid of, first one being this guy here. Um, but yeah, there's some decent ones, but there's not, I won't say there's a big standout player at the moment. 
Potential wise, there's still some good players here. Uh, Lewis Reeves looks decent. We might well promote him, but I think for now, um, the main player we're going to look at is this Fosu guy. He's a right back. Uh, we're going to offer him a three year deal. See what he says. That will assume that he agrees to it. And I think we might also go with Benick. He's also a right back, I believe. Uh, two year deal for him. Any other players that look good? Harry Baker doesn't look too bad. Uh, we'll go with him. He's a CDM. Give him a go, see what he's like, and uh, we might have a look at our uh, scout report as well, actually, thinking about it, uh, because we will have probably had more scout reports back. And uh, let's have a look at your scout reports. Yes, we've actually only got one player available, because the rest have gone. Uh, we've missed out on some of them. There are some decent-looking players there as well that we've missed out on, uh, and this guy clearly isn't. Let's do some more player drills. Again, for some of the regen players, let's try and get them up in overall and doing well. We've got Fosu there going up yet again. Um, there does look to be some decent players in here. Uh, we just need to try and pick the right ones and make sure that we're developing them enough, but also that we're developing the current players as well that we do need uh, for our starting 11 team. Now, uh, we have finished the season now. I believe we won the Premier League. We'll quickly check. Could be wrong, but we seem to be in good form, and we did win the Premier League by uh, 7 points actually in the end, so we did quite well, uh, which is decent, which means I'll remain as the Man City manager, even though I think I got, went out in the quarterfinals against Barcelona, um, which obviously isn't great, uh, but we've got some more emails to look at, so we've got a player returning from injury, it's Eric Dyer, which is good, and obviously the contract's being accepted there. This is the um, squad uh, scout report even, uh, and we're going to try and sign up this player, we'll reject him. Sign him up, sign Shawnee, sign uh, Steven as well, reject that guy, and uh, that will be it for those players. So there's some decent ones amongst them. Uh, we'll quickly change around some of these young players and decide which ones deserve to be in them. Okay, these appear to be our five best ones at the moment, so we'll just go ahead with them. I think I've only made one change to them, to be honest, um, because I think we pretty much had the best ones anyway. So there's some decent players there, actually, going up yet again on a lot of those ones, uh, which is good to see, uh, but it'll still be another few months before we see any dramatic changes to their overalls. You can see some of them there going up quite considerably already, which is good news. Fosu going up five overalls, quite incredible. And into the new season we go. We've got some of our youth players now looking quite good, actually. Uh, approaching 60 overall, some of them. We are going to continue to train them, uh, train them over the summer. Uh, I'll do that off camera before we go into the games in September. And Fosu has finally hit 60 overall. You will see that I've signed Reese Oxford so he can train him up. He's already 77 overall. Got him from West Ham. Paid a lot of money for him. Um, but we can now train him up and he'll eventually come into the England setup, which will be quite good. Because now we're starting to actually add some uh, good players into our team, which is good to see. Uh, I'm, I'm going to continue trying to get in some younger English players uh, and then hopefully trying to be able to train them up. But let's now move on probably to the September matches if we can. Okay, this is the England team for the up-and-coming qualifiers that we have. The usual goalkeepers, as you can see, Chris Smalling in the team. We've got Gary Cahill missing from this side because I've decided to bring in Kyle Bartley, uh, now alone at Leeds, so we have to put him in there, obviously. 80 overall, he looks incredible. If you look at his heading accuracy, 94, marking 90, he looks really good. Standing tackle, side tackle, amazing. 26 years old, 6 foot 4, he looks really decent, so we're going to give him a go instead of Gary Cahill, just so we can kind of have a look at a different alternative. Uh, Phil Jones is also 82 overall as well, so he's another option if we really got that desperate. Um, but we also bring in Reese Oxford as well, just as a, a little bit of a different option for us. He can play CDM, he's 78 overall. Again, I want to see what he's like before we have to submit the final squad for the World Cup. Um, so that means he replaces Raheem Sterling, which seems a bit of a strange one, but I've decided to do that. So I brought in Reese Oxford, hopefully uh, we can give him a game at some stage. That might well be one that I leave for the friendlies that are after these two qualifiers, but we'll see. And uh, moving through the team, we've got the usual midfielders in there, obviously, other than Sterling. But I've de decided to bring in Danny Welbeck, and I've taken out Vardy. A uh, bit of a different change again, but Welbeck's coming to 82 overall. He looks really good. Um, he seems to be the right sort of player for our team at the moment. He can also play left mid as well. Uh, Vardy's only 80 overall and a slightly older player. So trying to bring in some of the younger players and trying out some different players as well. See how, how they get on in these uh, qualifying games. So we will submit that uh, team. And I think we've got our qualifying game against Portugal. Is it first? Yes. Portugal then followed by Poland. 
This is the team I've gone with for the game against Portugal. As you can see, I brought in Cal Bartley there and um, decided to do that. A little bit of favouritism towards the fact that he's just joined Leeds on loan. Uh, the usual defence other than that though, Delph comes in, we've got Rooney at the centre attack in mid and Daniel Sturridge and Danny Welbeck up front. Let's go on with the game against Portugal. We need to win this match, obviously, to try and remain ahead of Turkey. Hopefully, they drop some points in their match. Uh, but let's see how we get on. Hopefully, uh, Ronaldo doesn't play well against us. I can't remember the results in the last time that we played against Portugal. Uh, I don't know if we did win the match or not. But let's try and get the three points in this game. And uh, that should be pretty much qualification in the bag, I would imagine. Tough match. I can't see Ronaldo at the moment, though. Um, which might make this a little bit easier for us. I could have just missed him, but I can't quite see Ronaldo in this starting lineup. Maybe this is him on the left? Yeah, sadly it is. Rudy, does he have anything in that shot? Yes, he does. 1 0, 15 minutes in. What a strike from Wayne Rooney. Just lays it off, uh, basically, just lays it off to the side of him. Little 1 2, I suppose, from that free kick. And he's just smashed it in. Really was, was not expecting that. Um, what a strike that is. In fact, it's not a 1 2, it's just laid off by Delph, isn't it? Uh, but right into the bottom corner, there was no stopping that one. 1 0, 15 minutes in, fantastic strike. Oh, ball through there to Welbeck. It's a lovely little touch from Daniel Sturridge. Can Welbeck finish this one off to make it 2? Just about. I thought I'd just not quite got the angles right there, but it is 2-0 and a lovely bit of play there. Portugal had to now start attacking us a little bit more because they've been very defensive, passing it around the back a lot to begin with. But now we went 1-0 up, so we're kind of forced to push forward a little bit. And that's cost them, and it's a fantastic finish there from Welbeck. Just about slips it around the keeper. 2-0, and uh, what a start this has been in the first 20 minutes. Oh, it's fallen nicely for Sturridge. He's got Welbeck to the side of him. He's played it through to Danny Welbeck. Can he finish this one off as well? He has done 3-0. Bit of luck there as the players collide with each other, allowing Sturridge to get on the ball. And uh, not the greatest place to collide with your uh, own teammate. Fantastic finish there again from Welbeck. 3-0. We're only like 32 minutes in, is it, or something like that? Incredible start to this match. Delph looking for Sturridge with the ball over the top. It's a decent pass. Can he keep hold of it? Sturridge looking back to Welbeck. Oh, should be 4-0. Should be a hat-trick, but it isn't. It's half-time. Still in the game 3-0. And uh, what a first half that has been for us. Fantastic stuff. We are going to make some changes because we're 3-0 up. And obviously we've got another big game after this one to play uh, against Poland, I think it is. So we're going to make some changes and I'll be back in a second once I've done them. Okay, all three changes have been made. Rashford, Wilshire and Walker all come on. That means Welbeck, Sturridge and Delph have been taken off. Now, the reason why I'm taking Delph off is because I think he's actually got a starting place in this team now. Uh, some people won't like me saying that because he's not very good in real life, or he hasn't been anyway recently uh, since he's joined Man City. But in this game, he's fantastic. He just intercepts everything. He's so fast, decent, really good left foot. Um, so he's probably got a starting place in this team at the moment. And uh, Wilshire, I don't think, is looking like he's going to get a starting place in the team. Also, just want to try out Rashford as well. And obviously, my two strikers uh, appear to be forming a decent partnership up front. So that's why I've made those changes. Let's get on to the second 45 minutes and uh, try and keep this 3-0 lead. And uh, if not, improve on it. Rashford. Going to look for Walcott with the pass. Does he have enough pace to get past Contrao? It appears he does. Does he have to finish as well? Yes, he does. 4-0. Brilliant counter-attack from their corner. Walcott and Rashford linking up nicely. And that could be an interesting partnership up front as well. Just about uses the pace to get past Contrao. And what a fantastic bit of uh, counter-attack in play from us. 4-0. And um, we're only five minutes into the second half. Okay, 4-1. Doesn't really uh, deserve that one at all. But it is 4-1. And I think, is that silver? I could be wrong on that one. But 4-1 in the 60th minute. Definitely not deserved. That's their first proper chance, really, uh, that they've had to score from. It's just gone in somehow. Uh, pretty poor defending, really. Opened up way too easy for them. Um, but yeah, it's 4-1 now, and it was still that scored. Walcott looking for Walcott. What a pass! What a goal! 5-1! Straight from kickoff. <laughs> well, forget about the goal they just scored. We just scored in near enough the same minute. What a fantastic pass this is from Kyle Walker. And it just about finishes off Walcott there. Not the greatest contact. But it's gone over the goalkeeper. 5-1. Can't believe this game. Unbelievable. Six goals in 60 minutes. Oh, it's managed to find its way to Walcott. It's a poor touch from Pepe. Walcott. And it's five. Sorry, 6-1. <laughs> 
6-1, nearly lost count of what the scoreline was there. Again, a little bit of luck, Pepe, poor touch from him. Uh, Walcott just puts it around the goalkeeper, just about scores it. 6-1, uh, what a thrashing this is. In the 90th minute now, the game is pretty much over. And as I said, we've won the game 6-1. Walcott uh, actually gets a hat-trick uh, after only being on the pitch for 45 minutes as a substitute. Um, but he will get the match ball 6-1. I don't think I've had a game like that before on World Class. Really strange game. It's not like they were down to nine men or anything. Uh, it was just a very bizarre match. We only actually had six shots on target. Uh, we were just very clinical. Possession-wise, obviously, as usual, uh, the computer dominates that. Turkey have dropped points, though, which is great news for us. That might actually mean we are almost guaranteed top. We'll take a look at the table first, though. Okay, so we are nearly guaranteed top. They can, they can actually still overtake us uh, on goal difference, that would be. Um, but we're on 19 points. We've qualified for the World Cup. Fantastic news, obviously. Uh, but we've got the final game against Poland, who have only got six points uh, from the nine games. They've only won one match, uh, and they've lost five. So we should really be beating Poland, but you never know what can happen. Uh, literally anything can happen on this game. So we'll have to wait and see. We will obviously make some changes for the match. Uh, obviously, once this has uh, unfrozen... Okay, that was a bit worrying. It seemed like it was just going to freeze then. It has recovered. Uh, but like I say, we are just uh, now looking to try and beat Poland. Make sure that we do qualify uh, in top position. Not that it really makes too much of a difference for us, obviously. Um, but it'd just be nice to, to say that we qualified top. Uh, we will just quickly do some of these player drills. Try and get some of the youngsters uh, that are coming through going up in overall. And let's see, do we have anybody going up? No, but a lot of attributes there have gone up, which is good news. Um, still nobody that's really standing out too much. On to the game against Poland, and we won't be playing that in this episode. We'll have to wait and see how we get on against Poland in the next episode. Um, we'll also be playing some friendlies as well. Two games, we've got um, Romania. Wait, I feel like I got that wrong. Yeah, Romania. Uh, and we've also got Cameroon as well. That is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If we could go hit 20 likes on this video, that would be absolutely fantastic. Also, if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. That would be absolutely fantastic. We're very close, or we're approaching, I should really say. I think we're about 130 subs off, uh, 4,000. So if we could try and reach that uh, maybe over the next month or so, then that would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time, and goodbye.